Welcome to a recap of today's live code hangout to chat application using fast API. We had identified a bug when we retrieve text. So we want to show the user what documents were retrieved in the chat flow. And there was a bug that the sources toggle were toggles were all kind of opening at the same time. But basically we've trained this bot on some documents about prompt engineering. We haven't trained it, we've actually just inserted those into a vector database. And in the process of chatting, we're retrieving those from the database and inserting them into the prompt. So it augments what I'm asking with hopefully relevant results from a vector database. But in order to know a little bit more what's going on behind the scene, we have these sources toggle on each of the responses. So we can say, okay, when I asked the question about what does it mean for LLM to fish, we got the uh, answer about teaching about to fish that actually came directly from the source documents. And here are the sources it retrieved, you know, from this document available on GitHub. And uh, you can give a bot to fish, uh, a fish or teach a bot to fish. So it's retrieving the uh, sources and the text. Now this is just truncated, but it's actually retrieving pretty large slices of text. So the whole idea is we have a little bit more transparency about what's going on behind the scene. The, res the sources are different for each response. So the toggle button should behave separately and prior to this uh, session when i toggled one they were all toggling because we didn't have a unique identifier so we were able to fix that let's take a look at how it was pretty fun and challenging at the same time the pull request is um not too long but the process of fixing the bug actually uncovered several issues with this project the configuration so we needed to make changes to our our launch for debugging, um, we needed to make a few changes to our settings for uh, our test uh, assistant. And those are all VS Code things. For people who are not using VS Code, it wouldn't matter so much. But we also needed to fix our imports um, to use the app namespace, as well as using OS path join instead of basically um, string literals for our paths. This is probably something we should have done initially, but. Uh, it got us during this pull request, so we've improved that in the process of fixing the bug. And the other aspect of, that's more related to the bug fix is that for every response that we're sending back to the user, when you send a chat message, it retrieves the documents and um, kind of concatenates those into your prompt or your request is along with the system message and it sends all of those to chat GPT and gets a response and for each response we're just kind of adding a, a, a UUID so that we have a message ID and this will get rendered into the template um, this is more just fixes of the imports and cleaning up some JavaScript that was actually buggy and unnecessary where we had some manual uh, event handlers here we're very light on the JavaScript in this app we're using HTMX and that handles most of it for us and you know bootstrap which gives us nice uh, baseline uh, mobile responsive um, ui components that are well maintained and under continual development including interactive elements like the toggle so all we had to do to get the toggle to work was um, give an id instead of having this generic id that appears on all of the sources and that way we can toggle any particular one it was toggling them all each sources will have this message ID and that was that UUID we generated up here. Each source's table there, if we inspect it, you know, we can, it's going to toggle sources and then this UUID and then we have this, this is the table or the div of the sources with the same UUID. So that's basically all we need to do. It's basically, it's declarative code in, in the template uh, and bootstrap handles the javascript for us so we're again trying to be real lean on the javascript not anti-javascript but just uh, adding it where you need it and you can get quite far and even have a dynamic you know user interface uh, using htmx and you know with toggling elements large language models don't have personal preference or taste because they're not sentient beings they process and generate text based on patterns and information from the data they were trained on. So while they can provide information about fish tacos, generate recipes, or even discuss their popularity, they don't have the capability to like or dislike anything. Man, that's kind of a bummer. I like fish tacos. And basically, the rest of it was just writing tests. And again, all this code was kind of generated for me by a, a prompt. And I'll show you more or less how the prompting works. 
And I was in the loop here though, it wasn't fully automated and I, I believe that is kind of the future of how we're going to work with these tools, at least it's the present reality for me is you have to stay in the loop and engage in and uh, steer it along the way. And I, frankly, I like that. It's quite interesting. It's uh, definitely augmenting my abilities. Uh, it's helping me solve problems much faster and in ways that, you know, were beyond my capabilities in a lot of cases. So I, I'm glad to have these. So it started with uh, an issue and I gave Claude some basic information about the bug and it generated this whole issue uh, with objective to modify the sources toggle functionality so that it works independently for each chat message using bootstraps built-in collapse without additional jobs javascript it gave a pretty good description of the problem based on only a minimal amount of prompting i noticed that the button in the chat that toggles the hidden sources unhides all the sources in the conversation when clicked not just the sources for that specific message the query selector attached to these dom items is probably too general. Likewise, we shouldn't actually need any lines of JavaScript to get the bootstrap collapse to work since it just needs a unique identifier on the HTML. And I kind of pasted this in from the docs because really all the bootstrap um, needs is just data bootstrap toggle to say, hey, this is gonna collapse something. And you tell it what the target is and the CSS selector there. And then you just define the element that collapses with that same CSS selector. The key is it has to be unique on the page or every element with that, you know, ID should be unique, but element with that, every element that matches that CSS selector will be collapsed. So you could technically collapse multiple items. Uh, so that was what I, that was my prompt, very minimal, but based on the conversation history and the project that I've been working on with Claude here, it gave me a very uh, thorough prompt. And that's what I was after is to have the LLM generate the prompt for the LLM because they're in inherently better at writing than me with guidance. And then I revised it a little bit, but it, it was very specific and even included implementation details and acceptance criteria. And I reviewed this all, you know, you want to be careful and make sure that you're getting good output. Once you have a bug related to number 10, we will be able to work on, you can say open and workspace and that's what brings you into copilot workspace which is in preview right now and from that it analyzed the issue and it generates a specification and it starts with the premise does uh, clicking the sources toggle button only show or hide the sources for that specific message using bootstrap's collapse feature without custom javascript so that's good you have like a very concrete um you know almost a hypothesis you can test and it checks that no doesn't currently work like that so it proposes some changes. So that's the specification. Once I approved that, it started in on the plan for very specific changes. So it looked pretty good. Once you had the plan and we did a couple of iterations on that, um, it went to the implementation stage and it made all these changes. But when the pull request was initially opened, uh, it was incomplete. Um, so this uh, took about four more commits working with ChatGPT and Claude. But overall, I think I oh, can't stress how useful these tools have been in terms of making this project possible uh, to develop uh, this in a couple of days from scratch mostly. So yeah, this has been a bit of an epic uh, session and a long uh, summary of the uh, live coding ha hangout today. But if you're interested in this project, uh, you can check out the source on GitHub. If you'd like to contribute, we do have several issues that are tagged here as good for issue. So contributions are uh, gladly accepted. If you want to try the project and you encounter any problems, feel free to open a discussion. I'll uh, try to help you out there. And, you know, of course, it's open source, so you can make use of it in any way uh, for whatever you're building. Whatever you're building. Okay. Well, thanks for your time. I hope you're doing well and uh, have a great day.